Lighting is one of the most important and often most underrated parts of video production, but it can also be sometimes confusing, especially when it comes to cool things like color temperature. So here's a warm up on color temperature that will hopefully illuminate the ins and outs of lighting basics and light the way to perfectly balanced shots. And this video is sponsored by Nanlite, so I'll be using the new Forza 2 360 watt lights in all of my demos here. And in fact, that's my whole situation. Everything in here is lit only by the new Forza lights. They're a Forza to be reckoned with. The basics of color temperature are pretty easy to understand, but for me, it was one of the most confusing things to understand when I was first learning about lights. I had no problem understanding white balance when it came to cameras, but I didn't understand how that color temperature then translated into lighting. So if you've ever filmed something with a camera and your footage looked way too orange or way too blue, something was likely off with your color temperature. Or it might be more accurate to say that your camera's white balance wasn't set to match the white balance of the lighting in your environment where you filmed. So in theory, at the most basic level, if your camera camera is set to 5600 degrees Kelvin and your light is set to 5600 degrees Kelvin, then you should get good, accurate colors. But what even is Kelvin and color temperature and all that? Let's discuss. Unfortunately, you don't need a degree to understand about these degrees because unlike ambient temperature that we're used to, rather than Fahrenheit or Celsius, lighting temperature is measured in degrees Kelvin. And also, unlike the weather and the temperature that we're normally used to, lower color temperatures equal warmer lighting, while higher color temperatures equal cooler lighting. And when I say warm lighting, I'm essentially just referring to things that are more orange and cool lighting, things that are more blue in color temperature. Most lights that we encounter in our daily lives are somewhere between like 2000 degrees Kelvin and 6500 degrees Kelvin, with 2000 being pretty warm, 6500 being pretty cool. 4000 degrees and above for the most part is what you start to refer to as daylight color temperature, and most daylight balanced lights are set to 5600 degrees Kelvin. So those are probably numbers that you're going to see a lot if you start shopping for lights. And it's also kind of weird too because daylight color temperature then is on the cooler end of the color temperature spectrum. But I know for me that was a little confusing because when we think of daylight, a lot of times we think of orange, right? Like the bright orange sun. If you were a kid and you drew a picture with the sun in the corner, bright orange. But if you really look at the light itself, it's much more white, if not even a little bit blue. And that really confused me the first time I ever bought a daylight balanced light because I turned it on and thought it was way too blue. That's not at all as I was expecting for daylight. I thought it was broken, but it turns out the only thing that was broken was my knowledge about color temperature. But that's a good thing to know right away if you're trying to match or simulate daylight color temperature. And most lights inside in our homes tend to be a little bit warmer, usually somewhere maybe around 3200 degrees Kelvin. Warmer light temperatures are also sometimes referred to as tungsten because it matches the color output of tungsten light bulbs from the good old days. So even though most lights now are LED, sometimes they're still referred to as tungsten just because of the temperature that they output. It's like how the save icon is still the three and a half inch floppy disk, even though when is the last time you used the three and a half inch floppy disk? And by the way, just take a moment to appreciate the magic of LED lights, LED video lights, because they generate so little heat they take so little power and they last so long. If you ever had the privilege of working with older video lights where even just a slight fingerprint on the bulb would cause it to pop and then the light itself would get to temperatures that like rivaled the surface of the sun and they also sucked up all the power in the power grid. They were just these hot, dangerous fire hazards. LED lights are absolutely amazing. So I'm LED lighted that I get to use all these ones right now. So even with all that in mind, who cares, Like, right? Like, Why does this stuff even matter in the first place? I think that understanding color temperature not only makes it easier to get better looking, more accurate footage more easily, but also then opens up so many more options for creativity and improving your overall workflow. Even just that basic understanding that indoor lights are typically more warm and yellow than outdoor lights, which are typically more blue and cool, is going to help you set things up and prepare much more efficiently than without that understanding. So then you won't have any more weird things like super orange footage when you film sports in a gymnasium, for example. Or what about somebody's wedding where it's this wonderful day filled with love and care, but your color temperature is off, so all the footage looks blue and cold and sad? That would be bad. 
And if you think of your camera as ultimately it's something whose sole purpose is just to capture light, then it makes sense for the sensor why you'd wanna pay more attention to the kind of light that's going into your camera. It's almost like nutrition, right? You wanna pay attention to the food and the nutrients that you eat because then you perform better. Camera eats light, feed it high quality light. And speaking of high quality lights, I wanna thank Nanlite for sponsoring this video. I've been using the new Forza 60 and 302 series lights for all of the examples that I've done so far. You can never go wrong with having a 60 watt light around and 300 watts is insanely bright. Each size has the option for a daylight temperature model of 5600K and there's also then the option for a B bicolor model with temperatures ranging from 2700 degrees Kelvin all the way up to 5600 degrees. I also really love the control units on the 300s because they have this nifty super clamp and a quick release plate that makes it easy to attach them to stands and supports and it's also just super satisfying to lock into place. They've also got the option to attach V-mount batteries for portable power and the 60 watt lights come with an NPF battery grip. And as you'd expect each light has a ton of built-in effects along with full compatibility with the Nanlink app. The Forza 60 Series 2 lights come in at $289 for daylight and $319 for the bicolor, while the 300 watt lights come in at $949 for the daylight and $999 for the bicolor. So thanks again to Nanlite for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to some hot takes about color temperature by talking about bicolor lights. That was a very smooth transition. Now, as we've been talking about daylight balance lights and bicolor lights, I think a really reasonable question is, why not just always buy bicolor lights? Why not just build that versatility into your workflow from the beginning? Why would you ever buy one light that is just one color temperature? This is probably a bit of an oversimplification, but it really comes down to two things, which are cost and brightness. Lights that don't need to change color temperature are typically a little bit less expensive than their counterparts that do, probably I'm guessing because they're a little less complex. But at the same time, those single temperature variants are also usually a little bit brighter than bicolor lights because all of their energy is focused towards one color temperature. I'll use this Forza 302 as an example. If I take off the reflector, when you have an LED light like this, which by the way, don't touch this part, this panel of LED chips is where all of the light comes from. And these have gotten really advanced in recent years. On a bicolor light, the individual LEDs that are on this panel, half of them are one color temperature and half of them are another color temperature. And then you can use the controls on the control panel to mix those together to change the color temperature from warm to cool. Whereas on a daylight balance light like this one here, all of the LED chips on this panel are all the exact same color temperature. So that means you can use every LED all the time and the light can get a little bit brighter than the bicolor one, which is the one I'm actually using as my key light right now. And you can probably see that over there because I changed my entire lighting setup for this shot here. So if you take two 300 watt lights like this one here and the other 300 watt bicolor version right there and you put them next to each other, this one that is only daylight color temperature, if I turn this to 100%, 100% of the LEDs are going to be emitting their full brightness of that color temperature. On a bicolor version, if you have it maxed out in one direction or the other, some of the LEDs aren't on because they're the wrong color temperature. So when you max it out to 100, it's not going to be quite as bright as this. Now, to be fair, that difference is nothing as drastic as being like only half as bright as one or the other. And typically, most of us are not probably going to be using our lights maxed out at 100% very often. My key light right now, this light right here to light the main shot in this scene is at 16%. So if I, let's max that out. If I max that out to 100, it's basically like I'm on the surface of the sun. But if I were like outdoors trying to compete with the actual sun, then you would want as much brightness as possible. Or if I was in a really big space, I have to turn this down. So if you know that you're probably only going to be working with one specific color temperature and for video, that's probably going to be daylight color temperature. It then makes sense to have a daylight balanced light because you'll save a little bit of money and you'll also then be able to have a little bit more brightness. On the other hand, if you're going to be changing locations a lot and using your lights in a variety of situations and for a bunch of different purposes, then having a bicolor light, buying a bicolor light is totally a smart way to go. But wait, there's more. As you can see behind me, I've got all kinds of lights, all my Pavo tubes doing different colors and stuff. And there are more traditional looking video lights like this Forza 60C, which as you will see is a full RGB color light. So as I have it set up here, projecting on this blue backdrop, it's cycling through every color in the spectrum. And that means not just daylight or tungsten, but every Roy G. Biv color on the entire spectrum. 
So why wouldn't you just want to get a full RGB light and have full control over everything, every color available to you all the time? The same way that having the technology to have a bicolor light makes a light a little bit more expensive, having all of the colors also then bumps up the price. So the reason I say that is because I think it's very important to be realistic about how you're going to use your tools. RGB lights seem amazing and having a good one or some Pavo tubes or something in your setup is pretty great, but you probably don't need your full lighting setup to be full RGB because it doesn't make a lot of sense to invest in something as expensive as a full RGB setup if you're going to use the same color temperature like 99.9% .9 of the time for all of your videos and your projects. So now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about when you might wanna mix things up by mixing color temperatures on purpose. One important thing to understand here is that whatever your camera's white balance is set to, anything outside of that is going to look really noticeable. So for example, in this setup right now, my main lights as usual in my studio are set to daylight color temperature. They're all at 5,600 degrees Kelvin. But if you look over here, this design that I have being projected on the wall from this Forza 62 over here, this looks warmer. This has kind of got an orangish warmer tone to it. Whereas all these other lights here, like the Pavo tubes back here, they're giving off a much more white, cooler color temperature. And I did that on purpose for this setup because I wanted to add a little bit of warmth to this specific shot. Since that's a bi-color light, I can change the color temperature. And now this over here is a daylight color temperature and it changes the feel, the mood of the scene. Everything feels a little bit cooler and a little bit colder. And now if I set that back down to 2800 degrees Kelvin, it's a lot warmer and the color difference, wait, I'd be a terrible weather person. The difference between a daylight balance light like this and a warm color temperature like this is pretty noticeable, especially because my camera is set so that these daylight balance lights look white. But what if I change the white balance on my camera, you might be asking. So now I've changed my camera's white balance to 6500 and you can see my lights here, these daylight balance lights are starting to look a little yellow and orange. I'm starting to look like I have a nice tan about me, but these warmer color temperature lights back here are starting to look really warm and I can do the opposite too. Now I have the camera's color temperature set to match this over here. So for me sitting in this room and looking at the design being projected on the wall there, that looks orangish and yellow, but on the camera, it looks pretty much pure white because the white balance from that color temperature and the white balance from the camera's color temperature are now matching. However, none of the other lights in this room are matching that because they're all set to a different daylight color temperature. And that means everything else is looking really blue. If I take this Forza 300B2 and change that to a warmer color temperature, now I'm starting to look kind of like I did before, a little more natural in my skin tone. This lighting is matching that lighting. These lights are looking extra cool over here. And if you look at this camera over here, you'll probably notice that everything is very, very strange. For me in this environment, this is very orange. This is actually kind of uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to be in this weird like deep fryer environment for too long, but on camera, at least my color temperature looks pretty normal because everything is set to match. Now I set my camera's white balance back to normal, which is a daylight color temperature and the light without changing it, you can see how orange it is. And this is starting to look more orange also. And I can switch that light back to a daylight color temperature. It's at 5,100 degrees Kelvin, just for reference. And now everything kind of looks back how I set it up in the beginning, where all of these lights match for the most part. And then I have a warm accent light over there. And all the colors are pretty accurate. And as the person who's physically in the room right now, I can verify everything looks accurate and comfortable. So mixing warm and cold color temperatures, high and low color temperatures is something that's possible, but it's clearly not something you would wanna do on accident. You definitely wouldn't want two lights on a subject that are different color temperatures unless you're trying to get a specific effect of some kind. And speaking very generally, if you're not in control of a location where you're filming something, it's a good idea to set your lights to match the ambient lighting color temperature. There are very advanced tools like light meters that can help you do that. We're not gonna really get into that right now, but if you're going somewhere and you see, oh, I'm inside and the lights look kind of orange and they seem to be very incandescent, then you know maybe you should have a light that can be adjusted to a warmer color temperature. If you're going outside or to a place that's lit by sunlight, then maybe that would be a good idea to use a daylight balance light. But if there is no ambient light source and you're building up everything from scratch, then you have total control over everything. What that really means is you can then mix and match with purpose. You can light your main scene and then you can have accent lights to establish a mood or a tone or I guess vibe. 
as the kids say. There's obviously an entire world of lighting that's a lot more than I can fit into a single video. And honestly, a lot more of it is beyond my own scope of knowledge. But hopefully now you've got a bit more of a solid understanding of the basics of lighting color temperature because gaining a better understanding of lighting is always a bright idea. And speaking of bright ideas, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. Your support is truly delightful. And because I did get to set up all these fun new lighting setups for this video, I wanted to show you exactly what I was using. The main key light is the Forza 300B2, which is a bicolor light, so that's how I was able to do that bicolor example. And I have it running through this massive 90 centimeter softbox. My backlight or my hair light was the Forza 62, which is a daylight color temperature light, and that's running through a smaller mini softbox. And so these two lights together, there was key light and fill light, both daylight color temperature. And this is the Forza 60B2, which is the bicolor light going into a projector, which is made for the smaller FM mount. And that is what let me put the design on the wall over there. And this Pavo tube was here to just kind of cast some warm light on this light so that it popped out more in the background. And since this is a video about lighting, what I want to do is have different lighting setups for different sections and then do the sponsored segment in a different spot. So that way everything looked a little different and there's also a chance to set up and try out different lighting. So this is what I have set up here, which I ended up actually liking quite a bit. Just like before, the key light is the Forza 300B2. I moved the 60B2 with the projector attachment over here. So that way on the background here, hello, it could have this different shape over there, which I thought looked really cool. And then I was able to just move the other Forza 62 over here on the C stand, just pivot the stand. And that could be my backlight, my hair light. I had one of my Pavo tubes over here for a fill. Of course, all the other Pavo tubes. And then I also put just some other Pavo tubes around just for general ambiance and the roadcaster because this in the background with all these colors always looks really cool especially when the subject is blurred and then you just get like the bouquet of the roadcaster that's like one of my favorite looking things this setup out here was by far the most ridiculous i had to set it up in the middle of the day and then wait like six hours for it to get dark but i really like the way that looks and it's sort of sad that it it's so temporary it was just for one little part of the video and and that's it but here's what it is i ended up using the 60c as my key light because i needed the four new lights in the shot and then i had a pavo tube as a fill light and then all of these are just like practical effects lights look at that bouquet that's so pretty but i thought it would be neat to take advantage of all the pavo tubes i've got so i have this holder here that holds four of them this is on my c stand and these are the original pavo tubes and then I have a whole bunch of these Series X Pavo tubes. And a while ago, Gerald and Dunn in his studio tour talked about these magnets that are super strong and have quarter 20 mounts on them. So I put them in the mounts of these Pavo tubes. And then when it comes to metal, they're so strong at supporting all of those lights. And I've got some more Pavo tubes here that are just on little stands. And then I've got just the giant eight foot Pavo tube just right there. And of course the actual lights for the video. So the 300 watt lights, there's the daylight one and the bicolor one. And then the 60 watt ones, there's a daylight and the bicolor. So I tried to like stack the colors. And then for audio, I just did the MKH-50 running into the FX3 and even outdoors with some background noise. It did an amazing job, I think. And then also check out the full moon while filming this video. I swear it looks better in person. And then of course, a mess of cables. But honestly, I'm okay with this big mess here because all of these lights make me totally delighted. Actually, once I turn them off, then I will literally be delighted. Delit.